We often have a tendency to get caught up in the work that we're doing and we're very, very busy. And at times we ignore some really simple suggestions that can make our life more efficient and more effective. I want to offer you some tips that will help you with your lesson planning process. And it's really important that you um, just acknowledge these few small subtle points that can make a big, big difference. Obviously, your lesson plan has to be connected to performance objective or outcome. Um, but here is where you can run into trouble. Um, generally, a lesson usually deals with one or maybe two objectives. Um, but you have to be very careful that you're not overwhelming or overloading your learners, uh, similarly with the outcomes. Um, so you really need to take a look at the time that, that is necessary and really take a hard look at the objective and ensure that you're doing it justice. Um, and one of the ways that you can see if this is working is to always assess whether or not your learner is getting it. You know, d has that aha moment happened? Do they understand it? So when we refer to assessment, we're not talking about a formal quiz or an exam, quite often it's just asking a question or having a student do a demonstration or just getting that verbal feedback that shows that 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 aha moment is happening or seeing you know that understanding happen within the discussion. So it's really important. It's also really important that you make sure you've got all the instructional activities and the content and the um, ideas lined up that will actually lead to that objective or outcome. Very, very important. You know, don't skimp on these areas. Make sure that you have all those resources. Also, be very, very careful about the timing. Don't take too much time to uh, draw, drone on and on and on a particular point. Get a sense of where you're at and then move on. That's where the assessment piece comes in. The timing and the assessment and getting a sense of what you're doing with your plan will go a long way. Make sure you've got all the pieces that you need. Um, if you're working with discussions, if you have people breaking up into groups and they're, they're going to be writing down their ideas, make sure you've got the paper to put the uh, ideas on. Make sure you've got you know the markers, all the resources you need. If you're doing a demonstration, make sure you've got all the components. If you're you know working in the workshop, make sure that you know all the resources are available. Make sure that you've got all the pieces in, in place. Don't forget about breaks. This is probably one of the biggest things that uh, people overlook is that um, some people would argue, well, you know, break every hour, hour and a half. I would argue that you might want to look at, you know, 40, 45 minutes and then have a break. And, and smaller chunks allow you to actually come back and really focus on ideas in a more effective way. Um, being able to get up, to move around, get that blood flowing. Don't forget the breaks. The last piece that I think is... Um, really important is to reflect on this process. Look at your lesson plans. As you work, are working through them, make notes to yourself. What worked, what didn't, what adjustments do you need to make? You, you want to have enough information, you want to have enough reflection, and you want to actually hone your lesson plans to the point that you could actually give your lesson plan to a colleague and they could actually run with all the details that you have in place. So that reflection piece is part of that iterative, iterative process we've been talking about through this entire course. You want to be continually revising, improving, updating your ideas and making sure that you're uh, creating the most effective learning environment for your learners. So use these, t these tips uh, to help improve your effectiveness in creating that learning environment.